And I remember the first time I heard metal on metal. You gotta hear it. It's so heavy. It's heavier than anything you've ever heard. When Anvil first showed up on the scene, it was like, fuck. This is cool, this is a statement. Like, literally, these guys are gonna turn the music world upside down. Seeing them was a, like a challenge to us to say, well, if we can't be better than that, then we should just go home. They were a great band, yeah. I always liked Anvil, they, they, they got my vote. If you actually had to choose one band and one album that really started the whole ball rolling, it would be Metal on Metal and it would be Anvil. The minute you heard Andal, the minute you heard the music, the minute you saw the pictures, the minute you heard the story, you could tell that this was the real deal. Anvil was one of those bands that just put on this really amazing live performance. Lips, the singer, used to come out with this bondage harness on. He used to come out with this, like, dildo and play his flying V. I mean, it was just in complete insanity, and that's what, why it was such a huge turn-on for us kids. It was like something we'd never seen before. They were thrash, man. They were, they were fast, a fast band. And you're talking about a year before the Big Four. You know, Slayer, Metallica. Anthrax and Megadeth. There's a certain sound that comes from that album that has become one of the basic formulas for any heavy metal record made today. We were talking about Rob Reiner like he was by far the best metal drummer out there in terms of, of his ability. He was the guy that was a like, holy shit. They were all good, you know, there wasn't a bad guy in the band. I mean, they were all great what they did. They should have made it a lot bigger. I don't really understand the reason why. Sometimes life deals you a, a tough deck. I, I don't know what happened. Why, why did they just fall off the radar? I really have no idea. You have to be the right place at the right time. That's the whole thing. If you're not at the right place at the right time, you, you will never do it. I don't know if, if there was an isolation thing because of the Canadian element or whatever, but something didn't translate all the way up to the next level. They never really got the respect that they deserved after a while because as big as an influence as they had on everybody, everybody just sort of ripped them off and then sort of just left them for dead. How many bands out here that did not make it to Anvil's level of notoriety. Thousands of bands tried to get a record deal back in the early 80s. Less than a handful of bands were getting signed to a record label. Record labels are losing their cash cow from bands out of the 70s that are breaking up, like The Eagles, Led Zeppelin, Leonard Skinner, and many more. Here are some bands that were not getting picked up by major record labels out of the early 80s. Ozzy Osbourne, Metallica, and Anthrax. Just to name a few bands. Ozzy got a shitty record deal from CBS Records in order to release his LP, Blizzard of Oz, in 1980. Nevertheless, it's all history now. By 1984, bands were starting to get signed but still less than a handful of bands were being signed. Metal bands like mine wind up breaking up and working odd jobs to put food on the table and keeping the rain off our heads and not achieving the level of Anvil's status of notoriety like my band CME. So Harvey Hardluck, who gives a fuck about you?